Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about new luxury releases for 2024. Maybe some of these are not really new, but are very, very popular this year, specifically on the beginning of the year. These are things that I've been seeing a lot on social media, on YouTube, and I just wanted to sit down and chat about them. Do we like them? Do we not? Are they worth trying them out? Or I just feel like they're gonna pass really fast. As always, these are just my opinions. If you like them, I would highly suggest you to go for it. Everyone has a different style. I am very particular with mine, so I I know now quite well what works for me and what doesn't work out and I very rarely take on new things and add them to my closet but there's actually some of this that I'm very interested in trying out so grab your coffee if it's the morning your drink if it's a little bit later and let's talk about bags the first bag that I want to talk about is of course going to be the Margot bag from the row if you have been watching YouTube in the luxury community in the past couple of months or Instagram or even TikTok you would see that a lot of people are calling it the new Birkin I kind of disagree with that but I do have a lot of things that I wanted to touch on on that bag because I do feel like it's worth it But it's never going to be like the Birkin and I don't believe it's gonna become a classic really long term So this is the type of bag that I would advise you to only get if it's a style that you enjoy So if you really like the Birkin for the style of the Birkin not because it's a Birkin It's a tote with two handles a lot of space. It's very practical I am such a Birkin fan way more than the Kelly because I just find it more functional and just overall good for for my lifestyle and what I do with my bags. So am I interested in the Margot bag? Yes, but I don't know if I'm gonna get it because it's harder to get here in Europe lately. You cannot find it anywhere. It's always on back order and it's also more expensive to get here in Europe rather than in the US. So for me to decide to try the Margot bag, it would have to be either getting it from a personal shopper for a decent price point in the exact size and color that I want. And I would mainly do this to try it in suede because I don't really think that I have the heart to ever try a Birkin in suede. I saw this one that Verilux had available that I'm gonna link in case anyone wants to get this dream bag But it's this Birkin 25 in a tube with Swift and Grizzly and the moment that I saw that they had it I was like, oh my god, this bag is beautiful. I've been so into suede bags. For example, the Bottega Veneta suede bags I've also been loving them. And yes, the Margot bag has a lot of similarities with the Birkin. I would say that even it could be a more comfortable bag. I don't believe that the resale price of this bag is going to stay where it is right now for a really long time. I think it's very similar to what happened to the book tote. When everyone went crazy for the book tote back in 2018, 19, you could not find a book tote in stores. So they were higher on the resale market. And that is what's happening right now with the Margot bag. You can see them on some resale sites going for a little bit higher than retail, but it does depend on the color and the size and the material of the bag because others do go for below retail but I do believe that this is the wave that it is right now and it's on its hike I am not sure how long it's going to last would I get it even knowing that it's not going to become a classic maybe yes I could be wrong of course but I'm definitely under the impression I just have this feeling that it's not going to be like that and it's definitely being overhyped with social media everyone has the Marco bag which is also what happened with the book toad like it got a little bit saturated the thing that I do appreciate in this instance is the Marco bag is very subtle. It has no logos. The price point for the quality and the leather, if you compare it to other brands, I would say that it makes it worth it. But to go to the extent to call it the new Birkin, I don't know. If I were to try it out, it would be on the smaller sizes and in suede. And if I found like a lighter suede, I would love that because then Masha's hairs wouldn't show that much on the bag. The next one is a new Dior bag and it's called the Lady D Sire, which is a smart name my ABC, so it is personalizable, same as my ABC Lady Dior. This bag, I was actually able to see it in person and there's a few aspects of it that I really, really loved and others that I was not fully convinced. I love the fact that this one has a different style of leather. Reminds me a lot of Togo from Hermes. It also has a zipper and something that I love about my vintage Lady Dior in the medium is that it has a zipper versus the flap that most of them have that in my opinion, it's not that practical, takes a lot of space. I just overall prefer by far to have the zipper and this one has a zipper it feels a bit more luxurious in a sense and it's a very classic subtle switch on the Lady Dior so this is something that Dior does amazing they always manage to change things around a little bit on keeping the soul and the heart of the style of the bag when I saw it in person I definitely played with it I put my stuff inside I tried it on with a strap without the strap and I do have two things that I want to note about the bag I tried what is the medium size and also the one that it's a little bit bigger than that both of them I found it to be be super super heavy and the strap was way too long like not useful for me because I am very short I am 5'1 and when I put it on the shoulder it literally looked 
quite weird. So if I was ever to go for that bag, I would have to switch the strap or just never use it with a strap and only as a top handle. But the style overall and the leather, I really liked it. And I do appreciate that it has the ABC. I have two Bottega Vanettas that I want to talk about. And the first one, it's the East West Andiamo Tote. The leather one that was super, super popular last year. Now they have an East West style like every single brand is doing is West on every single type of bag and I know that I was such a hater of this trend and I ended up falling for it with the DJOY so I feel like for certain bags it does work out quite well and for some others it feels a bit forced like literally the bag looks incomplete when with others it just makes sense like it's aesthetically pleasing and you feel like it looks really well so an example for me of bags that just don't look well a Birkin bag in this style for me it just I don't know, it looks wrong, it looks like a crime. But with this tote, I kind of find it appealing and beautiful. So it's not that I hate the east-west trend, it's just I'm very specific about the bag, the leather, the style. So we will take it case by case. Would I buy this one? No, if I was going to buy this bag, I would buy the classic full leather version of it. And the other one is not really from this year, but we're gonna see it a lot. It's the Bottega Veneta and the Amo clutch, and we're gonna see a lot of clutches. This one I particularly like, I would never buy it because if I was going to go for a clutch, I would go for something a little bit more subtle. And this one is a little bit too long for my liking. But I really, really love the details of the closure. I love that it has a top handle. I love the leather. I just really like the style of the bag. And we have the Hermes version of this, of course. If Bottega Veneta is not for you, but I think we're gonna see this one quite a lot. It's a little bit like a wallet on chain that was very, very popular, like back in 2017. Walks were the bags. Right now, we don't really see them that much. So I feel like this is what we're kind of replacing them with and this one has card slots inside so it kind of serves the same purpose this one is not new but i really wanted to talk about it because i saw two of them in paris last time that i was there and it's the mini birkin or the birkin 20 that at first i was like this is really not necessary it makes more sense with the mini kelly because the mini kelly has a strap i was very much not excited about it because right now we only see them in exotic leathers but i never saw it in person and the other day when i was in paris i saw first one of the store and it was so cute like I literally was debating going to this person and just asking if I could literally see the bag up close but I know that that's rude and my social anxiety would never allow me to do that but oh my god I was so mesmerized and like in love with it that if they start producing it in Togo I would die for it like I really liked it it was just so cute probably not very practical I understand that but it would fit more than the mini Kelly and I love the mini Kelly so in my mind it just feels like it's going to work out but here we're dreaming quite high. I don't even know if or when they have plans to really start producing it in other leathers that are not exotics or for VIP clients, but it was indeed very cute cuter than I expected when I saw it online. And I just found online one that is exactly the one that I saw. And the price point is insane, but it's the Birkin 20 Alligator Mississippi Gold. This one is not available anymore, but... It's 67,200. I do want to talk about the Chanel Kelly. And I did talk about this bag last year quite a lot. And I feel like I've changed my mind a little bit about it. At first, I was not a fan because the leather version seemed a bit filmsy. Just like not very substantial bags. I don't know how to explain it. It just didn't make me feel anything when I saw it the first time in leather. But right now, it's the hardest bag that Chanel has. Everyone wants it. It's never available. It's so hard to get. And I've been saying it a lot that I'm really considering what are the pros of the bag. And I do like it, just not enough to buy it. However, I saw it the other day in Tweed, this black and white Tweed. And we know I love Tweed, especially a good combination Tweed. And this one honestly made me change my mind that I would definitely consider getting this bag if it was on Tweed. Just not leather, for some reason the leather is just not doing it for me, but this specific one, yes, I would do it and I would really love to try it out. I'm not going to go out of my way to get it. I'd rather try other bags and other things that I have like in mind for this year, but I feel a bit more different about it now than I did before, so I guess that's progress. Another new Dior release, it's the saddle shoulder pouch. So this is a little bit of a twist on the Dior saddle bag, which I've always really, really loved. This one is a little bit different in some ways and I can see that this can be a bit more practical. This bag is also unisex, but one of the main problems of the saddle bag is that 
that the opening was not very practical because of the shape that it had and the flap. So the size of the items that you were able to fit inside of the bag were quite restricted and you had to play a little bit around it. And this one just has a zipper so I can tell that it's definitely easier to put your things inside of the bag. And it could be a very good option if you were a fan of the subtle bag but you were always on the fence because of the opening. So if there were certain things of the subtle bag that you didn't fully love but you were interested in the style, this could be a very good option and I've been loving a lot seeing that we have more unisex options and the fact that it has a bit more of a simple look. Now this one from Louis Vuitton brings me back a couple of years. This is the Louis Vuitton Excursion PM backpack and it reminds me a lot of the Bosphora backpack. I used to have one. I absolutely hated it but it was like part of that Louis Vuitton monogram backpack craze that I had around 2017. I was just obsessed. I tried the Palm Springs Mini, the Palm Springs PM, the Montserrat vintage version and I also had for a bit the newer version. I think it was released around 2018 if I'm not wrong I'm gonna put a picture of that and we've had a few different versions in leathers and sizes of that bag lately but at some point I had the Bosphora backpack and it had a zipper on the back for your computer it had a lot of pockets I also feel like this bag is jumping a little bit on the cargo trend that we have been having there are so many bags with cargo elements and I absolutely love the Picotin the Birkin even the Fendi baguette I really really like it so I feel like this is a bit of a version of that and bringing back the same essence of the Bosphora backpack back then I was so scared of a Vachera so that bag for me didn't really work out and we can see that this bag also has a lot of Vachera but really my mind has just changed around the topic I literally would buy products to protect the leather and it wouldn't get water stains or look used at all I remember also wishing that I wanted the lighter patina to stay forever and this is because I wanted my bags to look like new for a really long time and patina and water stains it shows that the bag has been worn and I've had a 360 change in my mindset with this I now love more very used pieces especially when it comes to Louis Vuitton I feel like it gives the bags such character so I do ask myself if all of the Louis Vuitton bags that I sold due to this would maybe work out now because now I'm not as scared as I was before and I've also decided that backpacks don't really work for me so I'm not really saying that I would like to try this bag but I do see a lot of elements of this one that makes me feel super nostalgic and I can also see that it has the rings on the top so maybe you could do a top handle situation with the bag could be really really cute also from from Louis Vuitton we have been seeing like new versions of the Speedy in leather with different prints and little things changing here and there so for example this leather Speedy that you can see that the zipper goes a little bit more on the sides that I believe that this would be probably a game changer I own a Speedy 25 in Damien Ben and it's the regular zipper on the top I've also been told that these bags have better hardware they are higher in price point so I would definitely assume and expect that they're putting better quality hardware on this bag so they would not tarnish as fast as mine did so yeah, it's really nice to see that Louis Vuitton is going for a little bit more minimalistic looks in some instances. Staying away from monogram and canvas, and just focusing more on putting out leather pieces that I think I would really, really like to see in person. So I'm gonna make sure to stop at Louis Vuitton at some point in the next couple of months to see what's new, what I like, and just consider it a little bit more. We have this new Chanel top handle little round bag situation that I'm not mad about it, but I'm also not crazy about it. It's really cute. I would definitely try it out but I don't see it like as a serious bag. I love the iridescent pink. I love just tiny bags with top handles. They're very much my thing so this is really cute. Do I think that it's groundbreaking? Not really. I like the fact that it's round but this is probably gonna have a very similar issue to the subtle bag that the opening is not gonna be very practical and what fits inside either because most items are rectangular or square like your wallet or your phone so I think I would have to see this one in person. I wanted to talk about Loro Piana for a little bit because I love the brand. I absolutely love their clothing and their shoes. I was not the biggest fan of the L19 pouch, like I have nothing against it in any way. I think it's a really cute bag. There was just nothing about it that made me want to go and get it and spend my money on it. But if I see someone wearing it, I really like it. So that's basically where I stand on with that bag. It's been so, so popular. And Loro Piana came out with a new bag that it's actually quite similar. It's called the Extra Bag. So it's the same, but not really. What I can see is that the main difference is on the strap on the top handle. The L19 bag has the top handle and separate, it has the strap. And the new one has like a continuous kind of strap that it also allows you to have a top handle. It looks like it's going to be very practical and it has a little pouch inside so it's interesting. I would be up to trying it in person and go see it at the store. I don't have a lot of an opinion on it. I do believe that it's probably a very practical bag. I adore my mini Kelly and it's my most used bag 
of my entire collection like by far so i do think that there's a lot of things about the l19 that people would love it's definitely easier to get and it has a lot to offer so i'm really curious to see how this one does and the next one that i want to talk about is something that i really don't like but i find it interesting and it's a collaboration with fendi and pokemon i am not a pokemon fan i honestly don't even feel like if any collaboration with any type of cartoon would come out even if i like disney i wouldn't buy a mickey mouse with Gucci or a Mickey Mouse with Fendi. So it's just personal for me. I just don't see any collaboration with any cartoon, but that's just me again. Some of the pieces are really interesting. It's just a little bit weird for me, but I wanted to show the collection to anyone that maybe is a fan and you're interested in it. I think it's quite out there. I do love that fashion is about trying new things and new styles and collaborations. I do, I do see that. Just the specific one is not for me, but I would love to know what you guys think about all of this. Which ones do you like? which ones do you love and definitely plan to get, which ones you will definitely avoid. Or maybe I missed one and I didn't talk about it. Let me know in the comments and let's chat about it. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you're not done watching, I'm gonna leave you two videos right here in case you wanna check them out. Thank you and see you on the next one. Bye.